You know what I love? What? I love a good deal. Like, mm. you know, when you go, you get something, and then you get something for free? Yeah. Always the best. Always the best. Like today, when we went to KFC, and we ordered the 90s throwback meal, and it came with these. Thanks, KFC. On today's episode of Watch Jericho, I went garage sailing. I was out on my ground, and I somehow ended up spending a lot of money. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today I went garage sailing like I said and I saw these two jet skis on a trailer. I stopped to see the garage sale because I was just out riding the Grom right by the shop and boom these things appeared on the side of the road with a sign stuck to them and I got an insane deal. They were marked $800 OBO and I was like well what's OBO mean and the owner said I'll take 500 and that was our negotiation. He met me right where I wanted to meet him. I asked no further questions. I said, I'll be back in one minute. It was that close to the shop, came back, grabbed a car, gave him some money and boom, we have two jet skis. And now you're thinking $500 jet skis, those definitely don't run. Well, this, I gotta tell you guys, is a 90 Kawasaki jet ski, one of the early, early jet skis, right after the wet bike, because it kind of looks like a wet bike with a hole. And then this is a 93, a Wave Runner 3. Beautiful graphics, even though they're kind of ruined on top from the sun. And cool throwback looks, obviously. They were period jet skis. So he walks around to this thing and he was like, yeah, they both run. And I was like, yeah, yeah sure. They don't, they, you know, they never run and they never have batteries. Every one of the ads says like, you know, buy a battery and you're good to go. Well, with these, he walks over and hits the old how on earth this thing ran amazing and i was like they have auto mixers he's like yeah they have the auto mixers usually they've been deleted as you know these old school jet skis they're all two strokes and usually you have to mix your gas beforehand it smells to me like it's mixing properly right now so sorry uh, that was me <laughs> <laughs> you smell like two stroke oil interesting the auto mixers working is absolutely crazy. I can't believe they haven't been removed or something like that. You know, usually it's broken or removed and everyone's mixing the gas. But that one runs amazing. And this uh, is a 93. It's probably a two cylinder. I don't know what engine's in it. I'll figure it out in just a minute when I look under the seat. Over here, we have this 90 Kawasaki that looks very cool. The seat is absolutely ruined, unfortunately. And then the owner walked over here and he hit the start button on this one. And I was like, this one will be dead for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's still full of water too. Apparently uh, it's friends with my sky. <laughs> water or smoke? Smoke, yeah. You gotta right. have one of the two. Yeah. Anyway, it's unbelievable that both of these skis run. I was mind blown when they both started right up. So, uh, very cool. Let's show you guys a quick tour of this one here. Uh, very old school controls. They both have their thumb throttles, which is obviously normal. Uh, you got just start and stop with, you know, your pull out key there slides on this one you know the key actually pulls out the stop switch so if you get in trouble you can pull out on it yourself and get home if you like lose the lanyard i've always liked that obviously all the new ones have the smart keys and uh transponders and the keys and all that fun stuff it takes a little wiggle to get that thing in there oh we got an emergency whistle too it works old emergency <laughs> whistle works who you who would have guessed you get two working jet skis but the whistle the no, whistle's you're just out of luck it's an antique whistle as you can see <laughs> unbelievable that it still works <laughs> we got a big storage compartment right there stay stay uh here's our fuel controls this one's actually set to on i noticed that one was on reserve which worried me a hair uh let's get the strap off of this thing and also it has a fire extinguisher compartment in the top here, but I tried to turn it and open this and it will not open. Let's try so, harder. Now I, I'm missing something. It looks like there's a knob that's broken off. If you look at the plastic, it looks like it's ruined. So unfortunately I don't think that thing's opening up, which means if you get pulled over on the lake, you're gonna get in trouble because they want you to prove that you got a fire extinguisher. Well, they can't prove that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. So this one, pull for fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher is under seat. Okay, so let's get this strap off of here. Hopefully this thing doesn't fall down. I don't think it will. So this strap was holding the jet ski on and the trailer was broken. 
So let's jump to fixing the trailer right now. It's time to fix this trailer. So Gabe and I have been in here working away. I got the welder all drug out. Gotta shield my eyes. And we are cleaning up everywhere we need to weld because this trailer actually had uh, this piece here. It's they're all channel iron, the whole thing's channel iron. And this one had just snapped off because the welds were terrible, obviously. We've got this thing <laughs> all cleaned up and we're ready to put a real weld in there that hopefully holds up. So we've got the jack to lift up the jet ski and get this thing all positioned. And uh, Gabe's cleaning up the inside of the weld now. And uh, I think we're about ready. I also cleaned the frame so we have a nice ground point. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do what I can. Nice grounds are kind of important for welding. They are. It leaves you, you know, grounded. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, what do you think? You out there? Yeah, I need to grind down a bit more. And I'll get we'll out get of the way. I'm already covered in metal, so uh, I'll let Gabe finish this up. Gabe's got the hot glue gun out, covering my eyes up. You guys can watch. It's this set too. It's what? Oh, it's set to auto everything. Hmm, sounds good. Yeah. Bro. See what I'm saying? Did you try it the other way? Yeah. It says on grind now. No, you... I didn't do that. It scares me. No, no, no. I did it. It was on well. Ah! It didn't dim at all. Cool. Gabe and I welded that back up. I did some welding. Gabe did some welding. Wow, look at that. It only took a half a second to get done. <laughs> so it's back together, ready for some paint. And uh, this was literally hanging down here. It's still hot. Um, and this jet ski was hanging off the side. And the reason that strap was there was to keep it from uh, falling off the side of the trailer as it went down the road. Uh, a couple pieces of wood they need replaced. The little jet ski slides there. And let's pull the seat off of here. Okay, there's the seat release. There's that fire extinguisher hiding under there. Dad was like, both those fire extinguishers are dead. And I was like, I know they're always dead. Everyone knows they're always dead. Interesting though, that must have been a different fire extinguisher case or something. I don't know what that was for. We got buoys. He said there were two anchors in here. Wow, what a setup. This is ready to go on the lake. And then uh, what, you fill the oil in here, I think. Open, pop this thing up. All right, now we can open the front. Whoa, there it goes. And here's the oil reservoir. You check your two-stroke oil right there. You got a big level uh, indicator, which I don't know if it actually works. It's just a tube and it looks like it's pretty tore up inside. It also looks like it's about out of gas, but you put your two stroke oil in there and you fill the gas out here. And uh, this thing looks pretty good. I didn't even, didn't even glance at it. Once they started, I was like, we're good to go. And this one has reverse. It's got, what? It's got, it's a 93. Hold on. It's got reverse in 93, man. How cool is that? So you don't have to get out and like pedal yourself backwards and well, stuff. Well, usually on a jet ski, you just <laughs> flick it sideways, but yeah, yeah. Reverse is always nice. That's for sure. <laughs> Did you s Wait. What? This just came out. Came out of there. Look on. The whole the intake is. Oh, the C clamp was holding the intake on. The bolts are stripped out of it. Well, that's ingenious. It doesn't even need that. Wait, that's the entire manifold and it's just sitting there? <laughs> yeah, I don't think this actually is where it draws air in, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The carb's over here, and the air comes from back there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why this manifold is all messed up, but that's pretty funny that this thing's just completely. Yeah, I'll get new bolts in there. I'll uh, tap those holes out, and then drill these, and put the mount back on. And I think within like a couple of minutes, we'll have the intake fixed back up on there. So there's our feed water for testing this thing out. You can hook your hose up right there. <laughs> this jet ski belonged to Chick-fil-A. It said the riding experience was pleasurable. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure. So the power plant is the Yamaha 650 Twin. Uh, pretty reasonable for its age, right? A lot of jet skis back then were still like 440s, 550s. We were getting out of that era, starting to get into the big engines. Now they've got like two liters and uh, I mean, monster engines in the new ones. But this thing 
It seems like it's really reliable. The guy said that both jet skis are just crazy reliable. He said this one has never failed them. It starts every time. And this one starts after a week. You gotta hit it with a, a squirt of ether and then it'll start back up. And he said he'd also drill the hole somewhere in here where he could stick the straw in for the starting fluid and just give it a squirt and it would always run, which is pretty funny. That's one way to make it work, I gotta say. It seems like the carb tuning's fine and everything like that, just listening to it for a second, so I bet he's right. We got a cool ignition box all the way up here at the front. And uh, you know, other than that, all the controls are pretty standard in this thing. Now, one thing that is really cool about the Wave Runner 3, you know, I was like, wow, it's got reverse in 1993. This was the first jet ski that had reverse. So if you see that, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if you've seen reverse thrusters on a jet ski before, it's very easy. I have seen comments on the internet, like jet skis can't have reverse. And my mind was blown that that was a, an actual thought, but yeah, you just have a reverse thruster, just like a jet engine, basically. Uh, it just flips the thrust backwards. On a jet engine, you know, you got the big clamshell, it goes like this, and it, that's reverse thrust. Jet ski, exactly the same. You just shoot the water the other way, and boom, you've got reverse. You lose about 50% of your efficiency. Uh, it doesn't work very well. It lifts the back of the jet ski up, but it's definitely reverse. I mean, it works great. Well, All fortunately, the this is a three-person jet ski. This is one of the first three-person jet skis as well which is crazy because the seat is so small. The new three person seats are, or it's like driving a, a car down the highway. So let's put this back together real quick. And lock that down. Let's get our six inch C clamp out of there because I'll fix the intake. And that's nice. See, Th nothing that's what like, I love. I mean, you go buy something nothing, and you get something else for free. Nothing like that's free tools. Nothing like free, free tools no. or buying KFC and getting some free jet skis. I agree. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> the By the thing, way, KFC, if you'd do that, that would be that like, would be very nice. That would be dope. Basically, we went to KFC to get dinner, and when we came back, we were pulling this trailer like four minutes later, and uh, Casey, the statue was over there, and he was like, I didn't know KFC sold jet skis. Like they do now. See what the Colonel can do for you. All right, let's see. Look at that. Thing works great, and this seat's actually not in terrible condition. That seat gone, this one <laughs> pretty good. So, that is my Yamaha Wave Runner 3 650cc twin. And uh, I'm excited to ride this one. I bet this one's, it, it probably goes a little bit. I do not think that this thing goes because honestly, it's, it looks like it does five mile an hour. Uh, it's hilarious. I like how they gave you like a ton of foot room. You're sitting back in your recliner. But uh, it also looks like if you could hit the brakes real hard or you land a wave wrong, your feet are going to slide up and be in extreme pain. Unlike on that thing where it has a modern uh, footwell layout where you can have your feet angled as the front guy, the person sitting at the front of the seat and you can stop everyone else that hits you or stop yourself. So I can't imagine that with three people. It just <laughs> that is not. I'm still people. my mind is boggled, man. That is, I mean, it's like that's a two-person seat today, and you know the new ones have like a divider for each person too, which is funny. That way, uh, everybody has their own little comfy seat zone, and the back one has a very uh, separated off seat on the three persons. That way, they don't slam into everybody if you hit the brakes, because all the new jet skis have brakes. Like you gotta have IBR. Wait. So you can't have reverse in the water, but you so, can have brakes. So, no, somebody said you couldn't have any of that. It was it was a hilarious thread I was reading. I was enjoying myself. Was it on the Onion or something? It was or? on Facebook. Oh, okay. well, if it's on Facebook. It has to be true. It has to be true. All right, let's pull this seat off here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. There's the oil for this bad boy. Well, now that answers. That's That, that question's been answered. Oh, this thing looks great inside. It might have a bit of an oil leak. There's two-stroke oil kind of all in the hole, not too much, but it's either spilled or leaked a little bit. Same back no, Let me get out of the way. Hold yeah, on. get out of the way. Okay, all the noise is the exhaust. It might, there might be a little bit of a rattle in the pump, but you know, everything in the coupler looked really solid. There's no shaft play or anything. So that's what I just wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong, wrong. There's a Kawasaki no oil barcode over. Oh, yeah, it, but it says J. That's probably a replacement engine, isn't it? It's still the same engine that came in these. These are 650s as well. So this is the Kawasaki 650 twin, both 650 twins, which is hilarious. Um, it probably makes okay power. The ski's probably a little heavy because you know they put the 650 in stand ups. That's that's about a, that's an okay thing to ride because it's kind of fast. I definitely want to get this out on the water and see it do 
maybe 30 mile an hour for lucky. <laughs> so we're gonna get these out of the water, that's for sure. I honestly think they're basically ready to go now that we've got the trailer repaired and we've taken a look at them. Uh, they run well. We'll top off the two stroke oil. Oh, this could be a lot of our problem. The two stroke oil cap is broken. There's oil all around it too. I bet it like it splashes out when you're out mm. on the lake. But hey, it'll keep the oil in there. I'll tell you, it'll keep most of the oil in there, which is good enough for us. Yeah, it'll get it by osmosis, right? Absolutely. The engine will just pick it up right out of the hole. Let's put this 650 back together too. I think it's ready to roll. Uh, it'd be good to find a seat. I need a styrofoam, full styrofoam seat. I'll see if I can find a seat that'll just drop on this thing and we will be ready to go ride it around the lake. Old school latches and they work great. Nice. Got a nice feel to them. Flip these things shut. Boom! We're all back together. So I'll top off oil, fuel. We might even put some fancy fuel in them even though I doubt it needs 91. Uh, 91 no ethanol because we got that and these things will obviously sit for a while. I don't want to be fighting uh, the carburetors all the time. So 91 no eth for these old school carburetors. Ah, I figured out the TS stands for Tandem Sport. Kawasaki was all over the fact that two people can ride on this jet ski insane that you can bring a friend. And this thing should go about 35 mile an hour. Obviously pitiful by any of today's standards. I think the worst jet skis today will do 50 at this point, like Sparks, the slowest thing you can buy, uh, at least 50. Uh, but those do have 1000 cc engines for the most part if you have the Sport and they're just designed better, better holes. But uh, pretty cool that, you know, this old thing, it did 35, probably makes a little bit of horsepower. I don't know how much, but uh, you know, what, maybe 20, maybe, maybe 20 horsepower if you're lucky. And this Wave Runner 3 should also do about 35 mile an hour. And it's, you know, with three people on it, it probably does 10. <laughs> it's a lot of weight, a lot of weight to push through the water. I don't know, those commercials just made me want to do it. The commercials. They, just, they just look like they're having so much fun. All like, we have to do is take these to uh, a cheap trip. To the beach. Just a simple, quick trip down to like Guam. It shouldn't cost much. And that's where we can ride in the same waters they were riding for the commercial. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's, no big deal. Don't worry about these guys. Yeah, Let's, yeah. It'll be plenty of fun because we'll have two to three people on each jet ski. <laughs> Those are my $500 skis. I'm pretty excited about it. And not to mention all the stuff that you guys saw in the jet skis. The toolbox is also full of stuff as well. There's a gallon or two gallons of two stroke oil, a spare wheel and tire, a 10 millimeter wrench. Can't beat that. Wait, can't, can't, seriously? 10 millimeter. Look oh, at that. Oh, snap. And it's full of life jackets. So we got, we're just ready to go to work immediately. We can go right now. Why, why aren't we? It's 1 a.m., let's go right now. How will they catch us? We can go 35 mile an hour. Uh, and we have fire extinguishers. That's right. Supposedly. In the next jet ski episode, I don't think there's much left to do. We already repaired the trailer. Uh, we might clean them up a little bit, but honestly, I think we're just gonna get right out on the water and see how they do. Um, I'll have to call a friend with some kind of modern jet ski. That way we can take advantage of this tow rope when one of them probably gives up, but <laughs> we'll see. I don't have high expectations for any old jet skis. Hey, you They're... know what? We could just race. Whoever wins gets to keep the pink slips. That's right. And the respect. Race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's $500 jet skis. Let's see if they deliver $500 of fun. We'll pick it up right there once these things are at the lake. Uh, and that's after I replace this piece of wood. That needs replaced first. That way we don't destroy the hole when we pull this thing up on. Uh, there's two pieces that need replaced. So we'll probably cut a few pieces of two by four up, paint the trailer real quick outside, and then throw the skis back on, and we should be good to go. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchchair.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. You know, if you go to KFC, you might just come back with some watercraft, some PWCs. Get KFC and PWC. That's what's good. That's the promotion for the month. It's the Colonel's Chicken Party Platter. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you could eat it on the water. Well, you're not supposed to do that, right? I, I mean, know. you don't want to. Fish love chicken. I'm sure they do, but what if you get a cramp? <laughs> Replace these little runners and we're home free. I still say you could have towed this with the Grom. I did. I bought them on the Grom and they were like, you probably can't tell them with that. And I was like, don't dare me. <laughs> I have not yet begun to defile I, myself. I will pull them with the ground. <laughs> don't, don't even. They can't weigh anything.
Well, they do in fact weigh something there. We did. We pulled them up a hill. <coughs> it was pulling them up a hill was a problem. Other than that, easy to move. They weigh 400 and something pounds each. This weighs about 463. This one probably weighs a hair more. I'd say right in at 500. But they're pretty lightweight. Well, that's because that one holds three people. Three people. Yeah. That's right. Can you imagine? Three for the ski weighs 400. And seventy-five-ish pounds, and the three people probably weigh. That's another what, the same four fifty pounds, you know. So crazy. I just, but would they all be smiling like they were on that commercial? Like yeah, you saw it on the blasting commercial. along, and all of them like. Ah. If it's on the commercial, it's always true.